You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, Get the point. Good. And now... Send Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody, and crazy, 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 crazy. It is a wacky Wednesday. It's a windy Wednesday out here in the middle of flyover country in Grammy land. And uh, you are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair. I blasted off here just a little bit ago, playing a little bit of tunage before I got started. And we had to buffer the wind a little bit. But other than that, I'm doing good. <laughs> Going out to you on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10, also on the RLM Spreaker Channel, the RLM TuneIn Radio Station, the RLM Internet Radio Station, and um, RLMRadio.xyz, and I think some other RLM and um places, maybe possibly, kind of, sort of, definitely some other places later, you get to hear the podcast. No, no video cast, because I got to tell you... <laughs> <laughs> Today's been one of them days. It really has. I mean, I've been puttering around and getting a lot of stuff accomplished. You know, little, little, little piddly jobs that it's like, I'm going to get that done today. I'm going to get that done. And I've put it off and put it off and put it off. And I finally got damn near all of them done today. And I sat down about four o'clock and thought, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do a little bit of knitting just just because I haven't done that for a couple months and, you know, get back in the swing of things and promptly fell asleep. <laughs> Apparently, if I need a nap, that's all I got to do. Pit up, pick up my knitting needles and a little bit of knitting and bam, I am out. <laughs> I got a little over an hour nap. So, damn. Recharge. Recharged my batteries. That's for damn sure. Um, oh, Beetle just baked cookies. Um, nom, 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 nom. I, I love some love cookies. <laughs> peanut butter cookies are awesome. Have you ever done a peanut butter cookie and put a Hershey's Kiss right in the middle of them? Oh, damn. Those are, those are just splendiferous, let me tell you. Or, or I have a recipe for chocolate cookies. They're like a cake cookie. And, um, when getting ready to bake them, I will put a uh, a Reese's um, chip in the middle. You know, like you can you can go and buy uh, chocolate chips for cookies. Well, I go and buy Reese's chips for cookies and put that in the middle. Although, you know, after reading that Monsanto article earlier today about who owns who all they own and stuff, I'm gonna have to start making my own peanut butter chips. But, I digress. Oh my god, those cookies are the bomb. They are freaking amazing. Just melt in your mouth with all that chocolate goodness. And it's a good, mmm, dark chocolate. Yum, yum, yum. And that little bit of peanut butter right in the middle that kind of infuses as it bakes. Oh, now my mouth's watering. I need a bib. <laughs> How about I say hey to everybody instead? Okay, over here on Facebook, let me see who's playing over on Facebook. Uh, oh, my brother is playing. Oh, I got to read you this. I got to read you this. She didn't realize that tapping him on the shoulder would make him do this. Apparently, last Wednesday, a passenger in a taxi heading for Midway Airport leaned over to ask the driver a question and gently tapped him on the shoulder to get his attention. <laughs> While the driver screamed, lost control of the cab, nearly hit a bus, drove up over the curb, and stopped just inches from a large plate window. Now, for a few moments, everything was silent in the cab, and then shaking, the driver said, Are you okay? I'm sorry, but you scared the daylights out of me. Well, and the, the badly shaken passenger apologized to the driver and said, I didn't realize that a mere tap on the shoulder would startle someone so badly. To which the driver replied, oh, no, no, I'm the one who needs to apologize. It's entirely my fault. Today is my very first day of driving a cab. I've been driving a hearse for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> but um, bump bump. Yes, backstory is important. Backstory is important. 
<laughs> okay, I also see the lovely Lisa B is over here. And, uh, oh, Brudda Al is also here. And, hey, Carlin Cousin Marlene is also here. Yay! Uh, da, 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 da. Who else do I see? Um, oh, hi, Barbara. Sweet. Okay, that's everybody I see currently over on Facebook. Over on realliberty.org, I see Rob Works and Cowboy Tech and Grimner. And once again, thank you, Grimner, for letting everybody know that I am live and in poison. And I also see uh, Bob Renner is here. Yay! And the lovely Miss Mary B was on just a little bit ago. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Moving along over to Mines. Hi, Mines. Oh, my goodness. Everybody is talking about all of this Mueller stuff. Mueller. I thought they said Bueller. <laughs> Piffle. Hey, everybody over on Mines. <laughs> I don't know if you're listening or not, but hey, anyway. I'm just going to put that out there. Uh, on In the Matrix. Hi, everybody over on In the Matrix. They have been going crazy about the Mueller thing and the Podestas and what's his face? The other, the other uh, pervy guy that Epstein and now this Ilhan Omar man that woman needs to change her head diaper that's all there is to it it's starting to reek just saying over here on freedomsnetwork.com let's see who's over here uh thanks grim once again for letting everybody over here know i am live and in poison i also see the lovely estrella was here for a while as well as pushing a pencil and bob renner uh and grimmy posted a couple of things and actually i'm going to go to a couple of those things here in just a little bit and then put in my two cents worth although with inflation i think it's now ten and a quarter cents you know, because inflation is that hidden tax. You don't notice it. Pay attention to the things you're purchasing at the grocery store. Just putting this out there. Uh, notice. Notice. The packages are getting just a wee bit smaller. A little bit narrower. Or a little bit shorter. Or on the bottles, the plastic bottles. Look on the underside and see how it's become concave. Now, I put out, I say that the retooling required to do the smaller boxes, the uh, concave in the bottles, you know, what have you, the tooling to do that, it takes quite a bit of sales to make up for that tooling. Why don't you just stop doing that crap, guys? <clears throat> Why don't you just hold it steady? Instead of doing the fake holding it steady where, oh, the price didn't go up, but you're getting less. It may only be one or two ounces, but you extrapolate that out to every single one of those products sold. And it adds up quite a bit in a real hurry. Just putting that out there. Over here on Twitter, still not real crazy about this whole new Twitter thing. Not real crazy about it. But, hi, in the Matrix, I, someone said wheels up. Wheels up, take off, yeah, I blasted off, honey, pretty much. Um, hey, Gary L., I see you over here. I also see Barman, thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out over here on Twitter. Truly do appreciate it. And Vinny was on here earlier as well, and so was Frumpy. Hey, Frumpy. I've been, you know, I've been listening to all kind of different videos today while puttering around the house. And some of them I've had to pause and rewind just a wee bit so I can get back to where I'd wandered off and tended to business and then come back and went, wait a minute, I missed a half hour of that. God dang it. So, yeah, and I've been sharing some of those. Dr. John Bergman, yeah, was on a roll today, at least my preferences definitely were he's the man he's the goddamn man and he was in the great state of kansas although i i will say barely 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 just a sniff in because he was in overland park which is technically right there beside the misery line so yeah that's not really kansas hon that's misery but we'll give him a e for effort so what the hey 
Okay, so I've been to Twitter, I've been to Ethan, I've been to Minds and In the Matrix and Fakebook and RealLiberty.org. I guess that means I got to go to the place where you need to be if you want to give me static. And if you're listening in on the Spreaker channel, please, my tin can kite string and duct tape is getting a little bit on the blustered side today. So if you want to give me some static, come over to RealLiberty.org org or real liberty media dot org think of a nickname join the chat give me some static and i give it back i might just go crazy on you well that's what i accused of anyway that's right graham 16 ounces and now 13.2 ounces yeah and beetle knitting is really very easy to learn it's two basic stitches two basic stitches it's a knit and a pearl. And then it's the different combinations of those two that makes the pattern. So it really is very simple to do. And it does put me to sleep. <laughs> Which is why I don't do a whole heck of a lot of intricate things. Because, yeah. It's like, I need a nap, I pick up knitting. <laughs> Okay, over here in the RLM, right up top, Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Beetle, who was cooking a steak. Oh, I got rumblies in the tumbly. And then he started talking about cookies, which made the rumblies in the tumbly even louder. And then I started talking about, talking about cookies, and then I started drooling, and therefore I need a bib. I also see Grimner is here. Hey, Grimmy, how you doing? Grim is the RLM God, don't you know? Also, the lovely Moose Goyle. Hey, Moosey, how you doing, hon? Backward Brackvit DC is here, as well as Anti. And Asmodeus Asmo is also here, as well as the lovely Beth Z. Hey, Beth Z, how you doing, sweetie? I saw you in the chat earlier, and then uh, I was off on another squirrel, which is okay. I got lots of squirrely things done. Chalsa Denis is also here as well as yours truly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I will keep even if I drop a stitch. I know how to pick them up. Um, <laughs> stretches too. <laughs> stretches. Ooh. That's that's almost like a scratch and sniff kind of thing, ain't it? Oh, don't go there. Don't don't go there. Jeez, oh Pete. My brain is yeah. <laughs> Hi, I be Don C. How you doing, hon? How are the puppies doing? Puppies! I also see Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the house, as well as Meister Bra, the lovely Miss Kate from down in Florida. How's the bathroom going, hon? A remodel going on. Man, bathrooms are just the worst to remodel. I know, I've been there, done three bathroom remodels in my life, and I'm looking at another one, and ugh. <laughs> Uh, they're not fun but you know when it's done then it's like dude I did this I did good <laughs> I didn't ever do them all by myself but you know I did an awful lot of the grunt work like laying tile work and and that kind of stuff and and the cleanup shit you know helping with plumbing and yeah I know how to do that kind of stuff I, I my house in town had a terminal case of remodeling itis not that the house was going to die but it's going to kill me <laughs> moving along hi rob boykes i saw you fired up that bubbler bless your heart dude a cybernetic tote coming from this crazy old lady um romes is here romes could go for about 20 peanut butter cookies and you know what i could do and things are yummy uh, the lovely Miss Vanna White, the letter turner of the RLM chat room, closely followed by Weatherdork. I think Weatherdork has a thing for Vanna White. I really do. I also see Phantom, the Phantom of the chat, is also logged in, as well as Cyborg Noodle. May you be touched by his noodly goodness. And Siv is also here, as well as Flash. Somebody is logged in. Flash, are you still awake? I know it's still Cycle VK week. So, the last week of Cycle VK, are you still up? Frumpy is also here, as well as Gooberzilla just logged in. Hey, Goob, how you doing, hon? And we got some Gromit in the chat, as well as JJ's, no, no, nine JJ's. Hey, JJ's from over there in Scotland. Keep that kilt down. It's a be 
breezy over here. Uh, I know you're not over here, and that was a suck-ass Scottish <laughs> accent, but what the hell. We got a kiss going on, too. See, I got a kiss just because just because I did the suck-ass Scottish accent. <laughs> also got a ponder gander going on, as well as some prints. It's in print. If it was in Braille, we'd all be letting our fingers do the walking, wouldn't we? Um, got some pom 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 sauce going on as well. And some sock puppet who is helping with the bathroom remodel. Sock, you are awesome. You're awesome. And we got a Smataz. I saw Soikles giving Smataz. Actually, she was having a conversation with Smataz earlier in the day. And I thought, dang, girl, you actually got Smataz to almost make sense. That's scary. The lovely Miss Donna Van Meter has joined us as well. Hey, Donna, how you doing, sweetie? We also got a Vinny in the chat. And to round out the crew, the one, the only. What? I love that name. What? <laughs> Just north of, ooh. Hmm. Oh, another earthquake. Yeah, well, you know, Mother Nature is tired of their nonsense out there. And she's saying, I'm going to keep shaking, rattling your cage until y'all pay attention. And that's what she's doing. She's rattling some cages out there in California. Yeah, it may be an island again, Miss Beth. It just might be. You know, if you put out the kind of vibrations that they do, it doesn't surprise me one dang bit that... Uh, the vibes are coming back to haunt them. And you know what? Even those people that, that still... And I understand. There's a lot of people that just plain can't afford to get the hell out of there. But man, you guys allowed this shit to happen. Ooh, socks getting in the blanket fort. Honey, I got me off of Amazon. I got me the way coolest carrying thing with color pencils. Oh, it's way cool. It, it rolls up and it snaps so I don't lose my color. And it has it has an eraser in it. I haven't tried that yet because I figure, why erase it? I'll just kind of smudge it and color over it and create a new color. Or, and it's also got pencil sharpener. It's way cool. Way cool. Yeah. I go to my blanket fort. You won't see me for hours. <laughs> okay. What else is going on? Um, water and electric do not mix. No, they do not. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Now, I need to go to just a couple of things at Grimmy. And then I'll probably go crazy on you. Because, uh, see, this is what I don't like about the new Twitter. Is instead of you always being up at the top and just kind of hanging up there at the top. And if you want to scroll down, you can scroll down. Now you got to scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up just to get to the top. And it's like, Ugh. And I even set the dumb settings to where it's always showing the newest first. And I still, I do not like the new Twitter. It's just enough to make me, I don't go there very often anymore because it pisses me off. So, where was I at? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This one is from RT. Which, you know, see, this is another reason why this is a rather risky show this evening. Because there's three massive asteroids that are expected to pass by the Earth today. With one approaching space rock flying closer to our planet than the moon. Never a straight answer warned. And you know what? Seeing as how they have declared that the moon is within the Earth's atmosphere, that means that that thing is within our atmosphere. Pay attention to everything they put out, because then you can start calling them on their BS. But if the moon is still within the Earth's atmosphere, because it's much closer than they previously thought, then that means that this thing is within our atmosphere too. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. Oh, darn. You mean we'll all be ejected from our meat suits and be able to go on our merry little frequency, eternal cosmic consciousness way? I'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing, but I'm not raising my hand to have that done anytime soon. Just saying. But yeah, apparently it's an estimated 360 feet wide. Well... Hmm. Oh, let's see. The next asteroid, 2019 OD, will be only 222,160 miles from Earth 
today. Dun, dun, dun. Are you scared? Be afraid. Be very afraid. Fear porn. Fear porn. Yeah. They discover an average of 30 near-Earth objects or NEOs. 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 They they discover an average of 30 NEOs every week. NEO. Huh. Matrix. Hmm. All leads back to the Matrix. It wasn't a movie. It was a documentary. We are batteries, people. But only... We are only good, viable batteries if we remain in that fear porn frequency, in that fear of others or distrust or hate of other. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, now for the other one that I wanted to get to from Grimmy. This is from of2minds.com. Um, well, one thing goober is if I raise my hand because it's a little bit warm out here. <laughs> Excuse me. And I have been working today. You know, I actually did kind of break sweat a couple of times. <clears throat> but never mind. I did put deodorant on. Actually, it's vanilla bean and lavender deodorant. Da -da -da. And it is still working. Hey, bonus. Booyah. Just ask the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs are still here. What do you think a crocodile and an alligator are? And Nessie. Don't forget about Nessie. There's still dinosaurs here. There's still lots of things here that they tell us. Oh, they went extinct. Yeah. Just because they ain't seen one doesn't mean that they're no longer here. Maybe they just got better at hiding from us. Kind of like Bigfoot. Bigfoot goes, yeah, I seen I seen you. I seen what you do. I want nothing to do with you. I'm going to make myself super stinky. So you stay away from me. <laughs> you think that's not a smart move? Seriously. I think it's a smart move. If I could stand myself. <laughs> which I couldn't. That would just. Oh. No. I get to. Yeah. I get done on the radio tonight. And I'm going to have to go hop in the shower. Because. Yeah. Even though the deodorant has not quit, it's like, I worked up sweat today. I'm going to need to go hop in the shower. I didn't do it earlier because, well, I picked up knitting and took a nap. <laughs> in any case, back to Grimmy's article that he actually sent to me in a message. And then I saw him post it on a few other places. I'd originally already put it in my pocket, but then I saw it over on the effing site and it reminded me. Ding, ding, ding. Guess what, Graham? You was going to go there. So, this is from of2minds.com. It's not just the news. It's fake. Faker, faker, belly aker. It's everything is fake. And this was actually posted today. Today. Yeah, that we fall for the fakes and cons is understandable, given that we have all, or all we have left in the public sphere is, well, fakery. Or as I have gotten to where I like to refer to the what passes for news for some people, it's spewage. They're spewing. Usually they leave chunks and it's kind of gross and somebody else is going to have to clean that shit up. But this article says, what do we mean when we say corporate media is fake? Well, we mean it's a carefully crafted con. A set of narratives, cherry-picked data, and heavily massaged, massaged statistics. Ooh, I can make that sound rather erotic. We're going to massage your, your statistics, baby. <laughs> you know, like the unemployment rate and stuff. And it's all designed to instill the reader's confidence in a narrative that serves the interests not of the citizenry, not of regular old John Q. Public, or I didn't realize it, but apparently, <coughs> Ray Sist, that's two words, it's a guy's name, R-A-Y, and then C-Y-S-T. You know, and you know what a cyst is, it's a pussy thing. But Ray Sist is the new John Doe. I'm putting this out there. Jane doesn't know it yet. She doesn't know that John lost his job because John's off drinking somewhere. He's drinking away their savings, but... In any case, those of us that are members of the citizenry 
John Q. Public and Jane Q. Public and Ray Sist. Um, yeah, we don't get to know these things. Only a select few get to pillage the citizenry. You know, like, it, you guys can't be pillaging each other. That's just not right. But we can pillage all y'all. That's kind of the way they roll. Now, once upon a time in America, no adult could survive without a finely tuned BS detector. Herman Melville masterfully captured America's culture of cons and con artists in his 19, or excuse me, 1857 classic, The Confidence Man. So, now an essential component of the American ethos is don't be a chump, don't fall for the con. And if you do, it's your own damn fault. Mm-hmm. American in 1857 was a simmering stew of con artists, flim-flammers, and grifters exploiting the naive, the trusting, and the credulous. And that remains the case in 2019. Oh, how things change and yet remain the same. We now inhabit a world where virtually everything is a con. That organic produce from some other country? Did anyone test the soil the produce grew in? Could be loaded with heavy metals and be certified organic because no pesticides were used during production. Are there any nutrients left in the soil or has it been depleted? What's in the water used to irrigate the crops? The point of the con is offshored organic is a higher price or has higher prices fetched for it. So this is why it's critical to ask of every narrative, story, product, data set, whatever, to whose benefit? Who put this out there? Who is profiting from it? Now, the employment and unemployment statistics are obviously a con. 93 million people aren't even counted anymore. They're statistical zombies, no longer among the living workforce. So if the unemployment rate were calculated on the number of full-time jobs and true workforce, which is everyone ages 18 to 70, that isn't institutionalized or in prison because, well, you know, those people are <laughs> slaves to the system. <clears throat> the unemployment rate, rate would not be the absurdly delusional 3.7 claimed by the bureaucratic con artists, which if bureau is attached to any of it, if it's not a dresser with a mirror on the top, it's a con. It's my story and I'm sticking to it. Healthy choice snacks are fake. They're loaded with the same low quality ingredients and high salt content as junk food. Social media privacy is fake. I know this firsthand because I used to do the behind the scenes stuff on one and I know just how fake that is and just how pissed people get when you inform them that your stuff ain't safe. This really is not a good thing. I'm going to shut it down. <laughs> Man, watch the shark start circling. Damn, it's scary. Really is. Walk away from it. Walk away. <sighs> if we really, really, really want to keep all our data private, you know, except for what we sell to marketers and uh, for immense profit, well, <coughs> yeah. Democracy is fake. Yeah, the live entertainment of selections sells a lot of ads and enriches the corporate media. But nothing actually changes. The deep state runs the federal government and the deep pockets run state and local governments. And have you ever noticed, I know it works this way because I was on city council, we collect taxes on a local level, which we send to the state and then we beg the state to send it back to us. Please, please, sir, may I have a pittance of what I sent to you? And you know what? If you're really lucky, you will get a penny on the dollar back if you're really lucky. Now, the major metropolitan areas, they get a boatload of it because they have more of a population base, a.k.a. voter base, 
a.k.a. those that play the game. Yeah. So, you know, the trickle-down theory is a bunch of bullshit. <clears throat> it's trickle-up. Or I guess, yeah, it is trickle down too because you gush, you, you know, you send it in torrents up to, and, you know, we, the city sends it to the county, which sends it to the state, which sends it to the fed. And then all along that little food chain, it, they beg to get some of it back. And the one at the top of the food chain says, oh, I dropped a crumb, fight over it. That's how that shit works. Prosperity is fake. Trillions of dollars in new currency and credit have inflated assets to absurd levels. All to create the illusion that everything's getting better in every way. Look at the housing market. Oh my God, houses are now going for, okay, out in my neck of the woods. I know housing prices are low compared to big cities. Used to was, okay, let me tell you, 35, okay, 40 years ago. When the ex and I first bought our house in town, eleven thousand dollars. Eleven thousand. Two bedroom, one bathroom, unfinished basement, and a garage on three corner lots. Eleven thousand dollars. <clears throat> now I'm being taxed that it's worth ninety two. Yes, we did some improvements on it. We did quite a few improvements on it. But 92000 is nothing compared to what they're asking for houses in town right now. It's freaking crazy. It's not that those houses are worth any more. They're not worth any more. It's your dollar is worth less. You can put a hyphen there if you want to or not. It's either worth less or worthless. Either way, saying the same thing. Now, um... Melville understood that we wanted to be conned. Lots of people do. We want to be live. The elixir will make our aches and pains go away. That the new face in politics will clear out the rotten corruption. That rising prices for everything means that we're getting richer and so on. You know, just like, ooh, we need a $15 an hour minimum wage. And I saw the other day, $20 an hour minimum wage. We need these. We must have a livable wage. It is an ugly, vicious circle. And you won't believe how many businesses will go out of business if that becomes mandatory. You'd be surprised how many people lose their jobs, how many entry-level jobs will go away. The whole financial system is corrupt. I'm not going to say broken because it's working just exactly as designed, but it had a corrupt design from the start from the start you ever notice that fake is also an, an a four-letter word that starts with f hmm now despite all the craftsmanship though fake is still fake and today virtually everything is fake a con designed to trick or distract the marks which is us from the looting plundering and pit um predation of those running the con for their own self-interest. Yeah. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Everything is a bubble. Everything is fake. Everything is a manufactured crisis. All to keep you in a lower vibrational thought process. All of it. So stop falling for it. You know, it's just like a lot of farmers out here. There's an awful lot of farms out here for sale. A lot of farm land out here for sale. And you know why? Because they kept buying into the mindset that if you get just a little bit bigger, you'll be actually be able to have a little bit of money left over at the end of the year. If you get just a little bit bigger, if you get just a little bit bigger, and so they borrow a little bit more and they get a little more in debt but they're a little bit bigger and they're producing more crop but it costs more to produce that crop 
because now they got to buy a quarter of a million dollar combines. That's that's not a top of the line combine, by the way. You start with the combine, then you got to buy the header. By the way, you need a different header for wheat and corn and milo. That's three headers. Those headers started around a hundred grand. <laughs> Farming ain't cheap, people. And then you got to buy all your seed from from some Monsatan little derivative, little underling, because Monsatan owns an awful lot of them. For God's sake, do not save your own seed, because Monsatan will come after your ass. Besides the fact that it's um, all been <clears throat> genetically modified, and so most of it, yeah, unless it's properly handled and properly treated and the proper chemicals are applied to it, it's going to be sterile. So yeah, it's not a pretty picture out here in the homeland. And an awful lot of farmers are starting to wake up. But it's a little bit too late for most of them. A lot of them are getting sick. A lot of them are going under. And who's buying up all this farm ground? That's the questions you need to ask. Who's going to have it all? Get yourself a small piece of ground. Become self-sufficient. Also, I heard some thing, some uh, listening to a Jeffrey Daughtry video earlier today. And uh, he's the uh, Christian Whistleblower. Uh, Christian Whistleblower channel over on YouTube. And they were talking about going vegan or a vegetarian based diet or a vegetable based diet. Which, yeah, and Dr. Bergman actually talked about this today, too. A vegetable-based diet is not a, is actually preferred. That means that you are getting an awful lot of fresh fruits and vegetables in your diet. So, you know, now, once again, this is part of the con, because when you go to the grocery store and you purchase these things, you have no clue what's, what they've been sprayed with what the water conditions are, what the soil condition is. So if you can, get yourself a little plot of soil and start growing some of your own veggies. And make sure, you know, if you live in the city, get you a good water filter. Also get you some good compost. Create your own compost. Rejuvenate your soil. I've been working on the soil in my garden for three years now and every year it gets potash added to it and it gets compost from the clippings from when I mow. I've got compost bins and those get stirred. Bless his heart, the farmer does that for me because he's got the muscles that I don't have the upper body muscle strength to be able to, not those big ass bins. <laughs> But he, <coughs> excuse me, he stirs compost and we add that into the soil at the end of the gardening season and we till that in. And after three years, <coughs> my soil is finally getting to where next year it will be in even better shape. Because we got some old straw bales and we're, gonna, we're tilling that in as well. Get that organic material built into the soil so that the soil and the earthworms, you start getting earthworms back in your yard and you know you're helping your soil. You know your soil is on the way to being healthy. But start growing your own food. And with the, the plant-based diet, um, you know, they were talking about how it's more healthy for you. And I contend, I contend that, you know, they say that a meat diet is not healthy for you. Have any of you watched uh, Eureka? What used to be, uh, it used to be on the Sci-Fi Channel. Used, you know, it was about a town in Oregon or Washington State, somewhere up there. And, um, and... Uh, it was a bunch of geniuses, and they came up with all kinds of crazy-ass things. And they were, you know, funded by the Department of Justice and the uh, Department of Defense. And so, yeah, most of this stuff was they looked at it for military applications. But there is one, there was one episode where um, 
the special of the day at the cafe was a uh, barbecued chicken you know chicken breasts and so everybody was having these wonderful chicken sandwiches and they were oh man they're so amazing but everyone started getting dumb and come to find out this was genetically grown um, meat it was it was not meat that came from real chickens it was taking the DNA from a chicken and then genetically modified and then grown under specific conditions into pieces of chicken meat and so it had no intelligence to it whatsoever and that carried through to those who consumed and they lost their intelligence as well now by the end of the show yes they were able to fix it and everything but that was an aha moment for me because I got to thinking about all these slaughterhouses and stuff out here and you look at the the big mega farming things where they have the chickens that you know have like a square foot if even that where they have to cut their beaks off so that they don't fight each other and peck each other to death where they have to trim trim their flight feathers you know and they're just all scrunched together so they're in a very confined area a very stress-filled existence same with cattle same with pigs very confined very stress-filled and then they start sending them up this chute and do, you can't tell me those animals can't smell death they can smell death because if you watch any of those videos, if you don't get anything from it, look at those eyes. And you can see the panic in those eyes. You can't tell me that that stress, that panic, that fear does not translate and doesn't get into the meat product. And then that doesn't transfer to the general population that's purchasing that meat product think about that now if you go to a small farmer who has cattle you know a few cattle and a few of them and you know they get treated pretty good you know they're almost a member of the family but it gets to the point where okay hun and I know a few farmers that they'll go out there you know and within like a month or so and they'll be talking to the cow or whatever and and or the pig or the chickens or whatever and they'll be saying you know it's getting to be butchering time and we're going to need you to get us through the summer or get us through the winter or whatever season and we truly appreciate the nourishment that you're going to bring to our family to keep us going and there it's a loving environment it's a caring environment these creatures are taken care of respectfully and they're not put through that massive you know those people that live on those farms are a hell of a lot healthier than we are a hell of a lot healthier and I contend that that's because they are not consuming products that have absorbed all of that stress all of that fear all of that negative vibration it is not in their meat and we do not then consume it same with eggs you know you think about it think about it something to ponder something else to ponder while I'm at it I keep seeing all this shit about no one is above the law no the president isn't above the law yada 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 no one is above the law and I posted this on Twitter and thank you Grimmy and Frumpy apparently nobody else on Twitter gets to see <laughs> what I post because no one else really gives a shit be that as it may people will see what they're ready to see people pe it will click when they're ready for it to click but I keep seeing this no one is above the law shit and actually I don't think and this is what I posted on Twitter the law is not a height that we must aspire to reach but rather a base level that we should not dare to breach now think about that 
everyone is above the law unless they break that law and sink into the depths of depravity into the baser emotions the base behavior the animalistic behavior if you will although I think animals are actually more civil than a lot of humans that I've seen of late at least on the videos on the webs I don't see those kind of people out here where I'm at because that kind of behavior would not be tolerated so people just plain don't act that way out here we have to rely on each other out here but in the big cities it's it really is an animal world a dog-eat-dog -dog world but when you stop and think about it every damn one of us that behaves in in a manner that is respectful and decent and considerate is above the law we are walking on that platform that base level that is the law we're trundling along and having a good time we ain't doing anything that's gonna put cracks in that law but this is such a topsy-turvy world everything is so bass backwards that they've got us be living that we live under the rule of law when actually we're living under the thumb of the law writers and they write laws to suit their whims so we are living under the whims of those people that designated themselves because so many decided I'm gonna go fill in a circle I'm gonna go punch Chad hope he hangs for a while I'm gonna go push a button we pretty much say yeah you have every right to put these squiggles on a piece of paper and say you must live by these not anymore start living by the real laws the natural laws the laws that basically state do not steal don't take something that ain't yours whether it's a life whether it's property whether it's somebody's security or their innocence or someone's good name or their reputation if it's not yours don't take it if they are willing to offer it to you fine but if they're not offering it to you keep your hands off and start living by natural law do not do unto others what you don't want done unto you period it's that simple ain't easy but it's simple ah, seven of nine was able to seven of nine was able to what Oh, Rome said we won't be able to survive with it. Survive with what? Oh, 5G. 5G is a bunch of shit. Oh, Beth says we are not created equal. Not said in that book. You know what? Everybody is, everybody's got a meat suit. It's what they do with it. The problem is that we have bought into this whole system of you have you have to have some means of exchange everyone's bought into that system you have to have a means of exchange instead of hey I've got this way cool thing but I've got a few too many would you like some no we have to have a means we have to have a monetary system for a means of exchange which basically makes a value system and then eventually somebody somebody decides that they can tweak that value system for their own profit for their own benefit usually that somebody is a lazy slacker asshole that doesn't want to produce anything of their own but they want to live off of everybody else's labor and that comes about because somebody has an imbalance you know this this nonsense of you must be totally goodness and light you must eradicate all negativity from your life you must be Zen 
you must be balanced. You must be balanced. Yeah, in this physical realm, shit's going to happen. There's going to be some unpleasant things that happen. <clears throat> but there's also going to be p some pleasant things that happen. And that's where, when I tell you I wish you enough comes in. I wish you to have just enough. Just enough sadness to appreciate your happy times. Just enough rain to appreciate the sunlight. Just enough sunlight to appreciate the rain. Just enough hellos to get you through the last goodbye. I wish you enough. And people really need to realize that there is no such thing as more than enough. We all just need to have enough. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com. I am going to run and check out what happened this date in history over on PIGazette.com. I'm running close to out of time. The word of the day over here on PI Gazette, Pigster Central, is last call. It's a noun. Not to be confused with a venerable pub warning closing or near closing time, it refers to the telephonic equivalent of junk mail which hits the homicide bomber's cell phone bomb trigger at the inopportune time, putting those 72 eager virgins out of reach. What the? Huh? I don't get that one at all, Hambo. I don't get it. In the quotable quotes section, we've gone from looking up at um, at the moon to looking down at Instagram. That's Bill Whittle. And that is so true. So true. No matter how hard you try, you just plain can't baptize cats. You know what? I know people who bathe their cats. And the cats like it. It's crazy, I tell you. It's crazy. This date in history, the 24th of July, 1824, political bean counting is changed forever when the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania fish wrap publishes results of the first opinion poll. Comrade Hillary calls it a vast right-wing conspiracy. She probably is about that old. Ugh, she sure looks it. This date in history, the 24th of July, 1898, a woman whose disappearance spawned a new junk science genre, Amelia Earhart, was born. Her epic flight into modern mythology waits in the wings. I did not know that that's when she was born. How very interesting. Oh, for that and whole lots more, come on over to PIGazette.com. Tell Hambo and Porcus at Grammy sent you and listen to them squeal like a couple of little pigs. I'll bet you you'll also hear the pig bunker slam shut. They'll be going, oh God, they know her. Quick, to the bat bunker. Well, not the bat bunker. Yeah, <laughs> the pig bunker. That's where they want to go. Okay, so coming up here on RLM, I'm going to be podcast fun and festivities the rest of this day but tomorrow at 2 p.m eastern time flash somebody is going to be on with 20 percent off then friday at 1 p.m eastern time Vinny will be on with the ponder gander for um some gandering at pondering i guess i don't know hey Vinny. then I will be back Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, for the Freak Friday edition of The Rocket Chair. And then at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, Grim and Moose Girl will be hopping on the radio, and they'll be having a Freaker's Ball. I have such a hard time staying up for that. <laughs> Call me an old fuddy-duddy, but I do. I just have a hell of a time. I have to listen to it later, because it's like... I, I just can't, guys. I'm tired. It's like I pick up knitting. <laughs> oh, the few times I do get to listen, it is quite fun. But yeah, yeah, it is a good time had by all. And then Saturday at noon Eastern Time, the Dork Table with Flash Rooney Dork and probably Vinny and who knows whoever else will show up. 
I don't know. My Saturdays are kind of hit and miss. Um, and then Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grim is going to be jumping on the radio to play some blues for you. And there'll be a rousing game of trivia going on in the RLM chat. And directly following Grim at 3 p.m. Eastern Time will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on your ass behind the woodshed. Monday. At 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Grimm's going to be hopping on the radio again and giving you some leftovers. Lots of really yummy brain food. And I'm not sure, is Flash still doing the Inapoifect World at 2 a.m.? Tuesday morning? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. In any case, I am going to get out of here. I need to find me something to eat because I got rumblies in the tumbly. Um... Let's see. Oh, and tomorrow, probably won't be playing on the computer at all, because guess what? It's my mama's birthday. I'm going to hang with my mama for the day. So, yeah, 80, let's see, 88. Wow. She's a spring chicken. I tell you what, she can outwalk a lot of people I know, including me. There are times when it's like, damn, woman, slow down. Of course, she needs to have her little two-wheel grocery cart thingy with her now that she pulls along she pulls it behind her because that helps her keep her back straight which good thinking mother but that woman walks minimum two miles a day minimum she tries to get in five miles a day yeah when i'm 88 i hope i can do that but i'm gonna go hang with my mama tomorrow so let's see what's going on ah beth z is comfortably numb sweet awesome sauce okay well oh flash will go back to 2 a.m this week thank you very much grim thank you ever so much so y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your wednesday evening or thursday morning depending on what part of the uh dateline you're at yeah yeah time mm. it's a made-up concept and yet once that thought has been put out there into the universe it then becomes real. You ever thought about that? Think about that. Once an idea gets put out into the universe and gets acted on by more than one person, it becomes real. So, watch your thoughts. Watch your own thoughts. Don't try and watch someone else's. Watch your own. And I'll be back Friday. But until then, please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night.